Well, 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 what do I have here in this sleeve? This is the brand new 2024 Lenovo Yoga 9i. This is a beautiful Halo laptop from Lenovo. It's also a two-in-one, not just a laptop. It does also come with a pen, so it's gonna work as a drawing tablet if you need that for graphic design, professional work, taking notes, whatever. You can see here it's an all-metal chassis, extremely premium. It is equipped with a beautiful OLED screen. This is an 1800p screen, high refresh rate, 120 hertz. It's also a touch screen. You can see that there. Of course, it does have the pen support as well. Very, very premium. This laptop also comes with killer speakers, super portable, not too heavy, all metal chassis. We'll jump into the review and see if this super halo product from Lenovo is worth your money. So that's the laptop there, very, very sleek. I've done a few yogas. I mean, I just finished an AMD one. Uh, two of them actually I just finished and I have the Snapdragon one beside me as well. This here though is you know kind of the most premium of the yoga I would say. They definitely reserve that for the Intel stuff. I did the I think I did this last year uh, the 2023 model it was very premium. You can see there it's all metal bottom speaker out there and then you get your intake there. Around the trim you get this kind of shiny metal rather than that matte basically just making it a little, little bit more premium there. And then the top you get metal as well. So it's an all metal chassis, top to bottom. Very premium, it does add a little bit more weight, but it does make it slightly more sleek, I would say, very premium. 1,324 grams, that's about three pounds or so. Okay, let's open the laptop here. You have to, it's hard to get under that lip because this actually is kind of embedded. So I actually used a little wee knife here, not too sharp, it's actually dulled on the tip for this purpose. I just got that in there, just the tiniest little bit, and then I could get my little guitar pick in there. Oh, maybe not. Nope, there wasn't. Okay, uh, just some clippies. Okay, the screws actually sat into those, so that's that there. A little bit hard to get off, to be honest. Yeah, it was it didn't feel great. I didn't want to bend it or anything or break it, so it wasn't exactly easy to get into. Uh, there's not really much going on inside. You can see that there. Uh, you know, not much really upgradeability, but overall it looks pretty good. I mean, the battery here is decent size, 75 watt hours. It's an Intel laptop, so you're not going to get the best battery life, but it's a Core Ultra laptop, so it should be decent. An upgrade from, you know, the 13th gen and 14th gen stuff. Huge speakers here. I expect pretty good audio out of those there. Upgradeability is pretty minimal on this laptop. You can see you get an NVMe here, 2242 size. You can't really get a bigger one in there, so you're going to get stuck with a 2242. I guess you could put in, you know, a 2 terabyte or something like that, but you don't really have much upgradeability in terms of storage. RAM is also soldered. So there's not really much going on in terms of upgradability. Really, you can just upgrade the NVMe. That's really it, uh, realistically. Uh, the cooling looks good, though. I mean, you probably get your RAM under there, I'd assume. Two heat pipes, one there, one there. Nice big fans, right? Nice dense fins on them, too. And this is just a Core Ultra, not high watt. Again, they're a little bit limited by, you know, the thickness of those heat pipes and that, just because it's such a thin laptop. Not a gaming laptop, so I don't expect that. Uh, if you watch the G14 review I did, that is claiming to be a gaming laptop, and it also had pretty thin heat pipes on it, but totally different class of laptop. Okay, so let's have a look at the inside here now. Looks pretty good. Obviously, we have a beautiful screen. You can see me reflected in it. Typically, the Yogas have really nice keyboards overall. I often find them to be about as good as it gets on a thinner laptop. It does have backlighting. So that's Max, Off, Auto like that so you can actually see it there we go so that's maximum there all right not super bright not super prevalent or anything like that just a little bit to help light especially if you're working at night you're going to be able to notice it uh you can see that the actual physical keycaps they're fairly low profile right they're not tiny i've actually used some laptops uh recently they're even smaller um, but it is actually recessed so you can see here that the actual keyboard is recessed down right so it's able to maintain such a small frame the laptop is very tiny but because it's recessed down, uh, you can have reasonably tall keycaps. Like I just recently test tested the Snapdragon uh, Elite X Elite, um, which had you know tiny little keycaps. The other thing that's nice about these is they have good travel, right? Lots of travel. So it's not like you're getting some kind of you know very compromised experience there. Uh, we'll do a quick typing test here. Yeah, very nice keyboard, actually. Very nice keyboard. It's extremely snappy. I mean, this is a super Halo product from Lenovo. So you'd expect it to have 
all the bells and whistles, no corners cut. This is a very nice keyboard. Oh, audio modes. Oh, that's what that is. So there's a game mode, music mode, and cinema mode. We'll have to actually play with that. Uh, that's a quick for the performance there rather than using function Q. That's cool. Uh, the trackpad is large, as large as it can be, really, like goes right up to that recessed keyboard there, right down to the bottom here. Very smooth, like that's a smooth texture. Very smooth, very, very nice trackpad, glass trackpad covering, so it feels really nice. And then the click is fantastic. Right, these, um, yeah, these Lenovo Yogas are quickly becoming like some of the best in the business, to be honest, they're very nice. They have some other options, like, you know, there's the Yoga, there's the IdeaPad Pro. They're all kind of in the same realm, and they use, like, similar chassis. There's little tweaks here and there. But just, like, general, as a family of computers, uh, the Yoga, especially even the lower-end Yogas, you know, even they're pretty nice. I just recently did a lower-end Yoga. But, I mean, you can get some pretty Halo stuff like this here, and they're very, very nice. Um, so I'm really becoming a huge fan of these Yogas in general. They're really nice. It's a touchscreen. Uh, but it has pen support, right? So you get the pen. So you can use the pen like a pen, right? Oop. Ooh, get the app. All right, well, let's see what that's about. What is this here? Lenovo pen technology settings, cool. I've never seen this before and I just reviewed a laptop with a pen from Lenovo. Maybe only certain pens have it, that's cool. I, I published that video like a week ago, not even, like three days ago. Okay, here's that pen settings app thing. Let's see what this is about. So, uh, top barrel button, I guess it's that there. Wait, what? Oh, this is a button. Is that a button? What the heck is it talking about? A bottom barrel. Oh, so that's that there, the top button. I guess it wants to be a barrel button. The bottom is going to be erase, hover click, battery status, pen sensitivity. Oh, that's cool. Tilt sensitivity. Okay, so you know you can go and you can just you know, draw like that. Of course, you can typically flip it over. Let's see if it. Let's see if it disables the trackpad, which it should. Yes, it does. I didn't even get all the way over it. Disabled the trackpad. So you're not going to get the back buttons messing with anything. Uh, palm rejection seems good. Right. I'm not bringing anything up there. Okay. Um, yeah, let's do a quick little drawing here. So I'm just using paint because I'm not going to install an app or anything like that. Now I'll use the right click to delete it. So I'll do a quick draw. It's very responsive, by the way. Yeah, it's actually very responsive. And Paint is not a very responsive program in general. Like it is, I guess it kind of is, right? Like it's not a bad program by any means, uh, but it's not like, you know, you're not gonna be using Paint here and be like, this thing is just absolutely tearing. Uh, but you know, it actually feels like I'm not noticing any uh, like trailer or lag that you get on some devices when you use a pen. Like Sam's Windows stuff too, like you don't have to use them that way. You can use them like that to erase. That's the, there. So the pen is actually really nice. Um, and you know, of course you can do that there. Hopefully that should flip. Oh, the only negative with these yogas is there's a power button down there. I find that really annoying and it does the sleep. So you have to actually use them the other way, like not like that, you can use them this way. Now this one's not as big of a deal because the power, there's power on both sides. So if you need to charge, if you need to use it plugged in, it's not a big deal because you can have the power up here coming off. On the yoga that I did recently, a two-in-one, um, it had the power and everything on only the same side as the, uh, had them on this side and then the uh, sleep button was on the other side. So I basically, I couldn't put it like this because the power was there. So I'd have to set it like this. And then what happened is I would set the laptop down and I'd press the power, which would just sleep it. This is a you know, high refresh OLED screen. So in theory, it should be quite nice. 2.8K, 1800P, very nice. OLED screen, 100% DCI-P. Again, OLEDs don't get super bright, like some IPS screens and LEDs, mini LEDs can get brighter. Uh, OLED tech just currently doesn't get, you, know, you can't get like 1200 nits realistically um, on most laptops, uh, but it's bright enough, still gonna be you know bright enough to have no issues there. Uh, refresh rate, uh, you can see there, you can go up to 120 hertz instead of 60, very nice. So it's 120 hertz, OLED screen, touch screen, high resolution there, so it's overall very nice. And you may not see it, it's kind of hard to show on camera. But, yeah, you can't really see it. Let me try going like that, and I'm gonna bring the laptop in, and I'm gonna see if I can get it on camera. It's very hard to get this on camera. No, you can't really see, maybe you can. See how there's like a, a screen door effect? It looks like I'm looking through a screen door. I can see that in real life too, it's not just, um, 
yeah, it's not just the camera doing it. Sometimes, you know, cameras will pick up artifacts that the human eye doesn't see. Now, interestingly, I don't see it on the gray. I, I did a uh, Asus Viva book review not too long ago, actually probably a year ago now, and the grays were really bad for that kind of checkerboarding. Let's see it here. Oh yeah, you can see it, yep. It's not as bad as that laptop, the Asus one, Asus one. Uh, it, that one was like so bad with the checkerboard that it was like unusable. You can definitely see it here though. There's a little bit in the white and a little bit in the gray. Now when it's further away, like at that distance from me, uh, you can't see how far I am away, but you know, from a distance from me, let's go like that there, I can't see that. Like I, I can't see it at all. I can't see that pattern there. I can't see that pattern there. But when I bring it in close, you know, I'm drawing, I can see that screen door effect there. And the screen door effect is not always present, but it's, it is a, an issue when you have an OLED screen that's also a touchscreen OLED screen. So I wouldn't call it bad, but it is there. And I wanna make it clear that it is, does exist. So if that's something you're very sensitive to, you may wanna check it out and just see how much it's gonna bother you. In this one, in this case, on this laptop, it actually wouldn't bother me, I don't think, because it's so minor. Um, it's not like super prevalent. However, uh, it is still there. Like I can notice it to the point of I did notice it. I couldn't notice it when I was just using the laptop, but when I brought it in to start drawing, I noticed that I could start to see that little bit of an effect there. So uh, the screen is gorgeous. It's very glossy as you can see. So it's a glossy OLED, meaning that the colors pop 100% DCI-P, so it already has really good color space. Then on top of that, it's glossy, it's bright. So you're gonna get really good colors here. The blacks here, I'm just gonna bring that down. I don't see that. I see something like that, a little bit of reflectivity, but it's an absolute black. So you get beautiful OLED blacks on the screen. It's an OLED screen. So, I mean, you're gonna get perfect blacks there. Uh, but the other thing is that the colors are very vibrant because it has a good color space and it's very crisp because it is such a fine resolution. This one I find does, you know, probably a little bit better justice showing off OLED screens. Very vibrant greens. No tearing on YouTube. I sometimes notice that with OLED screens. Yeah, like that's gorgeous. Really nice, really nice screen. And you can see here, I'm not noticing any of that uh, uh, screen door effect at all, like you, you can't see it. Like I could put my face onto the screen, I wouldn't see it. You only, I personally only notice it when you have a huge block of solid color, not blacks, obviously, because OLED's not even, the screen's not even on when it's black. I only notice it when it's um, on a very, very light white kind of surface or a lighter gray. I can't see what I'm doing, but if I'm getting really close, I can notice a little bit up in the blues here, a little bit of that pattern. It's hard to see because there's also like water patterns, but let me see. It's usually when you get a solid block of color. Yeah, I can notice it up here. Yeah, so there is definitely a screen door effect. Again, the screen has to be very close to you, but it is there, so just be aware of that. Like that's, this is 50, not even. This thing's gonna get super loud. All right, there's a new king in town. Um, it has this sound by Bowers and Wilkins. I don't know if that actually means anything because I've had lots of laptops that say they're tuned by this and tuned by that. These speakers are freaking incredible. There is sounds in this track that I haven't heard before. Um, like the waters just sounds different. Yeah, this, these are the nicest speakers I've ever used on a Windows laptop. MacBook Pro, like 14 inch, would be in the same realm as this. Probably, I don't know if it would even be better. It's been too long since I've used one. They would be close enough that right now I don't, I wouldn't say one is better than the other. This is incredible speakers, incredible. Um, yeah, so I'll just leave it at that. These are literally the best, these are, for me, the best speakers on any Windows laptop I've ever used. And I recently did the Asus Zephyrus G14 2024, which has excellent speakers. I've done some other high-end Lenovo Yogas and things like that of different sizes. They were, you know, they're great. Incredible speakers on this laptop. 10 out of 10 plus 10 on these speakers here. So this is gonna probably set a new benchmark for this. I have to like ingrain this into my brain so that I have a new absolute halo benchmark. So I do wanna show off different kind of sound modes. We'll put it on 50, which is kind of middling, it's still pretty loud, so you might wanna watch your headphones. There is this kind of music thing here, so we'll just go through them. So this is music. Mm. This actually sounds better, movie. 
sounds brighter and fuller. Game. Music actually sounds the worst. Yeah, the movie one sounds the best by far. Okay, we're gonna do some Cinebench runs here, just primarily for uh, noise and temperatures. We'll just check that here. We're in performance mode. We'll get the actual scores after in the benchmark section of the video. It's actually core throttling, but not thermal throttling. Now, uh, you'll see here this, it says 35 watts or so. Um, looks like it for a second or two probably went up, but you can see here it's sitting around 35 watts. The Core Ultra 155H that's in this uh, system here can have more watts. It can sustain easily, you know, 60 watts or more on a routine basis, just continually supply that. However, this whole system is only 65 watts. I noticed that when I first pulled out the charger, it was only 65 watts. So, you know, these chips are gonna be wattage limited in a chassis so thin like this. If you get yourself, you know, a much larger gaming laptop, or even the Yoga 9i, you know, the larger version of this here, that 155H will be able to be supplied with more power, right? So rather than sitting around 30 to 35 watts, it's gonna get significantly more power than that, which then in turn will give you a better score. However, in a thin little chassis like this laptop here, you can't necessarily do that because you're gonna end up getting thermal throttling, too much power, you're gonna have heat issues. So what they do here is they bring down the watts, right? that's why this only has 65 watts. They bring down the max watts supplied to the CPU. You might be able to burst for a few seconds higher than that, but you know the whole system can't do that. If this thing was going at 65 watts on the CPU, the charger wouldn't be able to keep up with the system and you probably get really bad throttling. You can see there's a little bit of throttling even right now. So that's something to be aware of here. Just because it's a 155H, you know, you look up how much power, how much performance a 155H will give you online. It doesn't mean you're going to get that in the system itself because it's a thinner chassis, but I think it's a pretty good compromise. This is a very thin laptop here. They're not going to throw in the highest watt variant of this chip here and just... So it's relatively quiet. I mean, it's you can hear the fans. They're going max speed, but they're not annoying. They're, um, we'll come in here and we'll go down to a balance mode. You can see the CPU wattage now dropped down to 28, 26, the silent. Silent's gonna drop down to under 20, I think. And here's a look at some benchmarks. Cinebench here on the left is silent mode, 8,200 or so. It's decent, I guess it's respectable for a silent mode, so you can definitely do moderately demanding tasks on that there then you can see on performance mode on the right here you're getting 13,700 so again that's pretty good all things considered you can do 4k video editing you have no problems with that doing demanding tasks this chip is capable of doing quite a bit more in a thicker chassis with more watts but overall for such a thin laptop that's totally fine i would say i'm introducing some cinebench 2024 scores here and you can see that it's getting uh, 716 which is actually quite good you're going to be rivaling some of the higher end mac stuff so that's pretty good M1, but still pretty good for a Cinebench. Good Wi-Fi on this laptop here, it's up to 500, around, probably goes up to about 600 depending on the server, so it's about as fast as my Wi-Fi goes. You can see here that on idle, around 99%, 100% brightness with full refresh, probably averaging about mm, eight to 10 hours, it kind of just depends. So if you're just kind of hanging out, you're probably gonna get between eight and 10 hours. It's okay, I would say, overall for such a bright screen. Then you can see here that we're doing some 1080p YouTube, and there is a fairly decent increase in the wattage demand on the battery. You can see here that we're probably going to get about four to five hours of YouTube, which for Intel isn't terrible. I've seen better results on Core Ultra stuff, uh, but I mean, if you really debloat the system, you'll be able to get that down a little bit, but overall, you're probably going to get about four or five, maybe six hours of YouTube playback. Here's a look at the camera here. You can see it's a pretty good wide angle there, you know, a little bit further away from me, but it's pretty wide. Polling rate looks fantastic. It's making me a little bit paler than I am, but not too bad, considering it's not super bright in here. A little bit of light, a little bit of light there. Not much on the front, but it's doing a very good job of lightening it up. Again, this is a Halo product from Lenovo, so you'd expect it to have a really good webcam, especially because it's a professional Halo product. Fun part of the video, and this is why I like that Intel now has good iGPU. We're going to play some uh, Baldur's Gate obviously. So we're not going to crank it up to 1800p. I mean, you could, but you need a lot of DLSS, a lot of FSR to play 1800p, the native of the screen. But the aspect ratio, I just threw it on 1200p. The nice thing is the screen is gorgeous. I love to play Baldur's Gate on a gorgeous screen. The colors really pop off the screen. 
it's just a really enjoyable. This is a lower wattage variant. You can see up here, you know, we're at 30 watts or so on that uh, CPU. If this 155H could push more watts to it, you would get better performance. It's kind of like the MSI Claw. You'll get about the MSI Claw level performance out of this. So that's a dedicated handheld gaming handheld. You'll get the same performance out of this because it's going to push the same amount of watts into the CPU realistically. Uh, technically, if you got the same laptop with a higher wattage variant, so I had an idea pad that could put more watts into it, same chip, just it could put more watts into it, it did perform better. funny yes she did <laughs> okay so for contrast i've come to baldur's gate which is by far the hardest area of the game like just leaps and bounds harder than other areas and it will destroy igpus that's why i come here because it slams the cpu and the gpu and we don't have enough watts you can see it's really trying to supply those watts consistently so if we had a higher wattage variant it would do a little better but this is fine i mean when you're in the city of baldur's gate you're gonna have to turn it down we'll just put it that way so um you could throw it on balanced throw it on performance. I find that that starts to get a little muddy, so probably just throw it on low, to be honest, just go like that. Uh, just to keep the frame, it still will be about the same, but it'll just keep those frame rates up slightly, right? So you may want, and then, oh, I forgot to turn on DLSS. Um, the FSR low, balanced, we'll just go like that. Let's see if low brings us up. It should bring us up closer to 30, 35. Yeah, so now we're locked above 30 or so. This is the hardest area of the game. The other thing I do want to check is this little sleeve thing. So it's got your little pen, your little pen storage. Right, you can put your pen in there, it's cool. Uh, it does have some rigidity and that's magnetized, right? That's nice. Uh, so it gives you some rigidity there. It's not just like a, a gel sleeve, it's an actual like physical sleeve. So not only is it gonna protect from scratches um, like that there, but also if you know you set something on it, uh, that might give it a little bit of an impact, like maybe not a hammer, but something that gives a little bit of an impact, it will, in theory, protect the laptop. Okay, well, that's the review. There's no point in, you know, going into more detail. It's an extremely nice laptop. Uh, we'll go over some negatives first to get the negative side of it. First of all, I mean, they're pretty expensive. They can be pretty expensive. So, I mean, yep, yeah, you're going to pay money for them. That's inevitable. Maybe if you can get them on sale. I mean, they will drop in price and you can get them on sale for sure. Uh, but they are slightly more expensive than, you know, other laptops from Lenovo in the Yoga series. It just depends what you're looking for. Uh, so that's the first thing. Second thing, um, I guess you do get that screen door effect. Like you can't see it here. It's invisible. But if you have plain, you know, like all gray, plain kind of color, you can definitely notice it if you're up close. Further away, you can't see it. It's not that bad. I've seen way worse offenders from certain laptops that are OLED touchscreens. So, I mean, that's something to be aware of. I would consider it just like it's there to be aware of it. Such a nice screen. I just wouldn't care, to be honest. Such a beautiful screen. Uh, the other negative, 16 gigabytes of RAM. I don't think a Halo product like this should even be offered in 16 gigabytes of RAM to save, what, 50 bucks, 100 bucks worth of memory? Uh, just slap in 32 right? This is a Halo product. You're going to want to use this for years. It's extremely nice. And that might, that might, that amount of RAM will impact things like gaming. If you're doing high-end productivity tasks, it will impact that. Even video editing. When I do video editing, I can notice when I don't have enough RAM. This type of system here with such a nice, beautiful screen, amazing audio. I mean, you're going to be wanting to use it for creative tasks, most likely, not just, you know, typing. So you would probably want more RAM. So those are the negatives. Positives, even though the screen has that little bit of a screen door effect that I guess you can see if you get really close to it, it's a gorgeous screen. The audio is truly outstanding on this laptop. Um, I would say so far probably the best Windows laptop that I've used, uh, certainly in 14 inches. Maybe not some like behemoth 16 inch might be able to beat it out. Uh, the keyboard is truly outstanding, beautiful, amazing keyboard, one of the best you'll ever use. Uh, even though it's a low profile keycap, the travel is nice, the separation is nice. I would love to type out essays on this on a regular basis it's a wonderful keyboard trackpad also wonderful i don't need such a big one but yeah this is a nice trackpad <laughs> uh it's got the foldable yoga style you can use the pen do your drawing if that's your thing you're gonna love it <clears throat> if that's your thing you're gonna love it it would be good for me to do you know thumbnails on that to quickly bang out some parts so that would be nice i mean yeah it's got nice and good ports and everything that's about it. I mean, it's a really, really nice laptop. That's the product here. I'll throw some links down below. Uh, if you do shop through my links, it does help. This is not a review. You know, I bought this with my money. Uh, I buy most of my products, to be honest. So if you do shop through those links, it does help me out quite a bit because these things can get pretty expensive for me to buy them all the time for review. Uh, but that's the review here. 
check it out if you want. And if not, I have many other reviews recently that I've done and I have more to come on similar types of products as this here.